everyone, and welcome to this episode of A Shepherd's View. I've entitled this particular episode, Matters of the Heart. Um, it's kind of a, it's, it's going to be kind of a link between Tuesday's video and this Sunday's uh, lesson uh, and stuff uh, as a part of our worship service. I don't know why this came to mind, and uh, but some of you already know my mind works a little bit on the weird side anyway, so hopefully you can follow along in some of my reasoning here. In the late 1960s uh, and early 70s, the government began mandating seat belts in all cars. Uh, I started driving formally in 1971. I say formally um, because every red-blooded farm boy probably started driving much sooner than that. I don't know. I think I was around 9, 10, 11, something like that. As soon as I could see over the steering wheel, I was maneuvering uh, trucks and tractors uh, around the farm. So I kind of started driving a little bit before then, but uh, not on the road. I, I was pretty good, stayed off the road. But I remember starting driving. Uh, I remember the day that I started driving. Uh, it would have been September the 28th at around 8 o'clock in the mornings when I got my driver's license. It's uh, kind of a funny story because in Indiana, one month after your birthday and a day, one month and a day, you are allowed to get your driver's license. And uh, my mom hauled me down to the driver's uh, license, the license bureau to get my license because she was done hauling me back and forth to practice. <laughs> so I remember the day I got my license. I also remember my very first car. It was this 1967 Fastback, Mustang Fastback. Dark metallic blue, loved that car. But it came with seat belts in it. And I wore them. I, you know, I never had a problem wearing seat belts. I, some people did, but I, just never did. I don't know. Uh, I preferred being on the safe side. Uh, and my next car, though, was a 1973 Nova Supersport. And I bought that right off the showroom floor. I was so proud of that car. I loved that car. And it came with a seat belt for the driver and all the passengers. Unlike my Mustang, which just had one for the driver and the front passenger. But it also had another feature, and this was the feature. The seat belt must be securely buckled, locked in place, and you must be sitting on the seat. There was a sensor in the seat, or the car wouldn't start. So, again, it was no problem to me. I I always jumped in, put the seat belt on, clicked it in place, I'm sitting in the seat, no problem. But I had some buddies that had similar cars, this is what I did, and they never liked putting their seat belt on. And so what they would do is, is they would buckle their seat belt behind them, basically sit on it, and then they would jump in the car, sit on the seat, and for all the car knew, seat belt was buckled, the weight was sitting there on the front seat on the sensor, so it'll start. And off they would go and with no, no thought for ever putting a seat belt on. Well, what it kind of showed me in all of this, and this is the point I want to make, you can create all the rules, make all the gadgets, put all the things forth to get people to do the right thing, so you say, but if their heart isn't in it, it's not going to happen. They'll figure another way around. We are a land of laws and rules, and I'm not saying they're not needed because they are. Uh, don't get, please, please don't get me wrong on this. I could not imagine driving around with, uh, without traffic laws and, and various other laws that guide us and direct us and keep us as a, 
civilized society. Very, very needed. But here's the thing. If the heart isn't in it, we can do everything possible to make it happen, and it won't happen. For anything to last, to really last, it must be a change of heart. It takes a change of heart. I was in conversation with someone not long ago about um, some much needed legislation and uh, also some re repeal of some, a needed repeal of some legislation. They were very strong about it. It was, it was kind of interesting. I, I get it. I totally get it. But it came down to the fact that I said, you do know until we change the heart of people, all of that's it's going to look nice. But what do we do with it? Because people's hearts must be changed. Matter of fact, in Proverbs chapter 27, and I'm reading, I'll read a couple of these uh, from the English Standard Version. It says, as in water, face reflects face, so the heart of man reflects the man. In Proverbs 14, it mentions righteousness exalts a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. In Proverbs 3, verse 5, one of my very favorite passages of Scripture, uh, it's one I have underlined in my Bible. It's a life verse to me. It said, trust in the Lord with all your heart, with all your heart, and do not lean on your own understanding. Wow, Whew. what a mouthful that is. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. i let that sink in just, just a few moments. Romans 12 and this will be part of Sunday's lesson. It says, And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. We need a renewing. <laughs> we need a changing. We need a changing of people's hearts and minds. Hearts and minds that are committed wholly and completely to God. Not leaning on their own understanding, but leaning upon the Word of God. A joyful heart is good medicine, but a crushed spirit dries up the bone. <laughs> the heart. How important the heart must be to our spirits, to how we are reflected to other people. So... Here's my thought today. Change of heart. I guess, I guess my question would be this. Are you sitting on the seatbelt or do you really have it on? I don't know. I'll let you answer that question. Let's pray. Gracious Father, life is really a heart matter. From beginning to end in your book, you talk about the heart. The psalmist talks about the heart. Cleanse our heart. Renew our spirit. Cleanse us, O oh Father. So many places the heart is brought up. It really is a heart matter. The problems of our world, the problems in our relationships, the problems in our families, really comes down to a heart matter. We need our heart to be holy and completely vested in you. Help us this day, O oh Lord. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.